In this example, we compare the counter movement jump performance of a 100 meter sprint runner to that of a weightlifter. Both athletes are at quite an elite level. Next, we will open the force platform recording for the comparison trial. In this case, this will be for the weightlifter. So we have the data displayed for both athletes, which is quite a busy graph. So we'll just turn off the individual left and right force recordings so that it is a little bit easier to see what is happening. We'll also turn off the velocity and also no longer display the phases of the jump. I am now zooming in the graph to the eccentric and concentric phases of the two trials and I'll now shift the comparison trial so that it aligns in time with the trial of the sprint athlete. I will now display the velocity curves for the two athletes and you'll see that the peak velocity is very similar between the two, perhaps slightly faster takeoff velocity for the 100 meter sprinter. But the force output characteristics of these two athletes is quite different. The weightlifter produces a higher peak force closer to the point of their takeoff, while the sprinter exhibits this double peak and this noticeable dip in the force output. The different force profiles for the two athletes is reflected in different velocity curves. The sprint athlete produces a much more negative velocity during the dip compared to the weightlifter. The time from initiation of the jump until the point of takeoff is quite similar between the two athletes. But it is the actual force profile that is different, where we see that the sprint athlete unweights a lot more than the weightlifter. So to explore these characteristics further, we will zoom in more closely on the eccentric and concentric phases of the jump. We will then change the bottom axis to a velocity base. So this is now a graph of the force output against the actual velocity of movement in the jump, comparing the sprint athlete in the thicker line compared to the weightlifting athlete in the dash line. The sprinter produces their peak force at zero velocity. In other words, the changeover from eccentric to concentric. They also exhibit this much larger area in the force velocity curve that we see here, representing the eccentric phase of their jump. It is also noteworthy that the peak force produced by the sprinter is considerably lower than that produced by the weightlifter. However, the weightlifter increases their force output during the concentric phase, coming to a peak at the point of around 2 metres per second. The sprinter, however, exhibits a decline in force output over the concentric phase, and there is this very clear dip in force output during the latter part of the concentric phase just prior to takeoff. So while both athletes produce very similar takeoff velocities during a counter movement jump, their actual characteristics of force production and velocity profile is quite different. The sprinter greatly emphasizes the eccentric phase, whilst the weightlifter demonstrates considerable force production during the concentric phase. Such characteristics are likely a factor of genetic predisposition to choose particular sports, combined with the type of training performed, which is quite different between a weightlifter and a sprint runner. Such analysis of force velocity characteristics reveal a lot about the qualities of an athlete and permit the quantification of changes as a result of training or injury and help to guide training program design.